All right, let's just say it. The Loire Valley is not as well known as a lot of other wine regions in France. When consumers think about France, they often think about Burgundy, Bordeaux, Champagne. Maybe you haven't even heard of the Loire Valley, but let me tell you, it is one to keep an eye on. There's definitely a lot of incredible wines coming from the Loire Valley. And if you don't know much about it, today's episode is for you. Hi friends, my name is Sarah and I'm a certified sommelier and host of the Wine CEO Podcast Show. Every week on this channel, I dive into a unique wine topic, interviewing winemakers, talking about a region or a special variety to make wine approachable, easy, and fun to understand. This week we're doing a Loire Valley 101 or a quick overview, everything high level that you need to know about this exciting wine region. So let's dive in as I chat about the Loire Valley. The Loire is the longest river in France, and the region actually spans over 140,000 acres, making it one of France's largest wine regions. Believe it or not, the eastern part of the Loire Valley is actually only about two hours drive from Paris. So the wines from the Loire have always been very common to be found in Parisian bistros and restaurants all around the city. I had the great opportunity to visit the Loire Valley just a few weeks ago when I was traveling through France this summer. Let me tell you, the Loire was stunning. It's absolutely a beautiful region, and I learned a lot when I was traveling there. The first thing that I realized was how wide the region is. I know that sounds kind of silly, because you could probably tell from looking at a map, but it really is incredible as you're driving through the region to realize that the vineyards are really clustered around main cities that are spread across the river. And so you have these cities along the river banks, and so it can take four to five hours to drive from one city way over on the east coast to the west over by the ocean. So um, it's definitely a, a region that needs a lot of time to explore. It's not some place that you can go and tackle in just a few days. I am so excited to be able to go back someday because in my three days there, I barely scratched the surface. I only got to see like three or four cities and there's just so much to see. But it's definitely a good thing to remember when you are traveling to the Loire Valley that you need a car, definitely, to drive around and you should plan that it's gonna take quite a bit of time to be able to visit different regions. One of the best ways to see the region is on a hot air balloon ride. I had an incredible opportunity to go on a hot air balloon ride one morning as the sun was rising and the Loire is known specifically for its castles. So you go on this beautiful hot air balloon ride and you're just like riding over the castles and it was my first hot air balloon ride ever and it was this just like mystical, magical, romantic kind of beautiful setting because you have the mist rising over these castles, you can see the sunrise and it's absolutely stunning. You have these uh, plains of rolling vineyards and it is absolutely picturesque. So the Loire in general is a place where a lot a lot of people will vacation whether they love wine or not because you have these incredible castles with great history that you can explore and just go uh, enjoy the beautiful gardens and see all of the incredible history that's on display in a lot of these castles and so the region has incredible history. Now this video is not about travel tips, it's more about the 101, everything wine related that you need to know about the Loire Valley. but. If you have not subscribed to my channel, make sure you do so. There's going to be a YouTube short coming soon all about my top tips for traveling the Loire region. All right, so let's talk about the main grape varieties that are grown in the Loire Valley. The Loire is really a unique region compared to a lot of other regions in France where maybe they specialize on one, two, or three grapes. There's a lot of diversity in the Loire Valley. You're gonna find all of the wines represented in the Loire, white, rosé, red, sparkling, sweet wines, everything is made throughout the Loire Valley. And that makes it a really diverse region, which is exciting to explore. The main grape varieties that are grown in the Loire are Sauvignon Blanc, Chenin Blanc, and Cabernet Franc. But there are a lot of other grapes that are grown here as well. The region is known for Pinot Noir, Gamay, Grayot, which is a local indigenous variety from the Loire. So the Loire is also known for Cremant de Loire. Cremant de Loire is a sparkling wine that is made in the Loire Valley, and it's called Cremant of Loire, Cremant de Loire, because Cremant is the word used for sparkling wines made in the traditional Champagne method within France that are not from Champagne. If you remember, Champagne can only be called Champagne if it's from the Champagne region. So instead, this is called Cremant de Loire, and it's a sparkling wine that's made in the Loire Valley. There's a lot of grapes that can be used in Cremant de Loire, um, many of the grape varieties that are local to the region are permitted. Often you're going to find Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc, and Cabernet Franc mainly used, but there are other grape varieties that can be used as well. 
Because of the diversity in the region, it's interesting to see how the winemakers will adapt from year to year and make different wines. So if it's a really cool year, the winemakers might focus more on white wines or sparkling wines from the region. If it's a warmer year and the grapes ripen a little bit faster, have a little more fresh fruit characteristic, then they're going to focus a little bit more on the rosés and the reds. So on one hand, I think this is really exciting because you have a lot of diversity and opportunity for the winemakers to be really creative and they can make sure that they're tailoring the best wine from year to year so that for for that vintage, you are going to get the most amazing product out of the Loire Valley. At the same time, I think it's probably held the Loire Valley back a little bit because instead of niching into some specific wines that the consumers around the world can be really familiar with, there's kind of a broad spectrum coming from the Loire. So that can be a little confusing for you if you're going to shop for wines from the Loire. You may not necessarily know what to look for, what to buy, and I think what can be so challenging with the Loire is you really have to know who the great producers are. There's a lot of incredible wines from the Loire, but there's also some bulk produced, not as high quality wines as well. So you really have to spend a lot of time diving into this region to be able to understand what is incredible quality and what are some wines that you probably don't need to spend as much time on. So the biggest thing here is going to be don't be afraid to try new things. Once you find a producer that you love, you know they're making incredible wines from the Loire, you can enjoy them time and time again. You have to explore a little bit um, and you can also definitely go online and look up wines that are highly rated or wines that are known from a top producer, um, but just know that that's always up to the the preferences of the rater or um, you know whoever the you know wine enthusiast may be that's speaking about it. Uh, my taste may be different than your taste, and that's okay. So always good to try a lot of different options and find a producer that you know and love. Another thing that's different for the Loire Valley that is not the same in Burgundy or Bordeaux and other reaches in France is that there's not really a classification system within the Loire, especially around specific vineyards. So you won't have plots that have been designated Premier Cru, Grand Cru, etc., so that you know if it's been designated as a really high quality region. So that can make classifications a little difficult because within the Loire, you really don't have any specific classification to tell you if a wine is higher quality than another. Now, there are some vineyards throughout the region that have historically been known as producing incredibly high quality grapes and therefore some top wines. Um, these are called Liudites. And so sometimes you will see that term listed on a bottle next to the name of the winemaker as well as possibly the grape variety. And so that can give you one inclination that this is going to be a higher quality wine because historically the region has considered those grapes to be high quality, but that's really the only classification or designation in the Loire Valley. So again, I think it really comes down to finding the right producers that you know and love, you enjoy their wines, and you go back to them over and over again. There's a lot of variety within the Loire, and so you just gotta try wines till you find what you love. Another thing to note within that though is that because of the lack of regulations, there are some terms that can be used on wine labels when speaking of Loire Valley wines that don't necessarily correlate with other terms that you find throughout the wine industry. So let me give you an example. So when winemakers in the Loire are denoting if their wines are sweet or dry, they will use terms like sec, demi-sec, do. So terms that we're familiar with, especially from like the champagne process and other regions around the world. But the caveat sadly is that within the Loire Valley, those terms are not regulated. So a winemaker might say that their wine is do or sweet, but there's no regulation around how many grams of sugar have to be in that, that wine bottle in order for it to be dew or sweet. So see how it can be kind of challenging because there could be a winemaker that chooses to use dew and they use six grams of sugar per liter, but there's another winemaker that might use dew and they have three grams of sugar per liter. And so you as the consumer might have a little bit of a challenging time. You really have to uh, do your research in advance. If you're looking for a particular style of wine, uh, you know, research in advance to look at what your wine shop might have, speak with the wine shop owner to see if they're familiar with that particular wine, look up the fact sheet for the wine in advance to see how the winemaker has produced the wine, how much sugar is in it, how they choose to use certain terms like do, demi-sec, et cetera. Um, and then that way you can make the most informed decision you can before buying a particular bottle. So the Loire is basically broken into three main areas, the Eastern Loire, the Middle Loire, and the Western Loire. The main areas within the Eastern Loire are Sancerre, Puy Fume, Mentau Salon, Kinsi, and Rui. The Eastern Loire is known almost exclusively for incredible Sauvignon Blancs, especially Sancerre and Puy Fume are known around the world for being incredibly high quality Sauvignon Blancs. You'll find these again in cafes and bistros all over Paris and throughout France. The wines are not your typical Sauvignon Blancs that you might find from like New Zealand or even areas in the US where they're a little more grassy. 
The Sauvignon Blancs coming from this region are really mineral forward, citrusy. They almost taste kind of like stone and flint because of the soil in the area. It's a really unique characteristic and honestly, they pair incredibly with goat cheese. Highly recommend. And then the Middle Loire is broken into two main regions. You have Anjou Samor and Touraine. There are many smaller appellations within them, including the very famous Sauvignons, Court de Cham, Vouvray, Chinon, and Bourgoy. Some of the best Chenin Blancs in the world are coming from the Middle Loire. And there's also a lot of really incredible reds and rosés, as well as the infamous Cremant de Loire. Most of the Cremant de Loire is made from the Middle Loire region, so it's definitely the larger of the three regions with a lot of wines to explore. That's actually where I visited when I went to the Loire Valley. I got to interview a winery from the Bourgoy region. You'll hear more about that in a moment. But it's a beautiful region, lots to explore and enjoy, and lots of diversity within the types of grape varieties that are grown there and the wines produced. And then last but not least, you have the Western Loire. So this goes all the way right up to the seaside, right on the western coast of France. And the region is predominantly around the city of Nantes. And the region here is Muscadet. So Muscadet is the name of the wine that's produced here. And it's made from the grape Melon de Bourgogne. Now, if you caught my video about Burgundy, then you might remember that the word Bourgogne is Burgundy in French. So Melon de Bourgogne actually means melon of Burgundy. So you might be kind of confused thinking, why is this Burgundy grape located in the Loire? Well, in the early 1700s, there was a massive frost that happened in the Loire Valley and many of the grapes were completely destroyed. But there were some monks from Burgundy that wanted to help out. And so they brought a more frost resistant grape variety to the Loire Valley and they planted it there. Melon de Bourgogne, thrived in the region, did really, really well. And actually the region of Burgundy completely got rid of the, the grape and planted Chardonnay and other grapes instead. So now Melon de Bourgogne or Melon of Burgundy is not in the Burgundy region, but only located in the Loire. It's an incredible grape. It makes a delicious wine, Muscadet, that again is named after the region there. And it's known for being an incredible pairing with oysters. You're right on the coast, you have seafood, you have this delicious, refreshing white wine, and they're an amazing pairing together. Believe it or not, Malone de Bourgogne is actually the largest wine produced in the Loire Valley by volume. So it's definitely one to check out if you have not before. One of the wines that I've been hearing a lot about recently is Rosé d'Anjou. So I think this is kind of a trendy topic to keep an eye out for. Rosé d'Anjou is actually an appellation within the middle Loire and Rosé d'Anjou tends to be a little bit of a darker colored rosé, usually made from Cabernet Franc or sometimes Cabernet Sauvignon, as well as Gamay and some of the other red grapes that are grown in the middle Loire. But it tends to be a really flavorful, bolder rosé. So it has these like bright herbal notes and fresh fruit characteristics, but it's not heavy in tannin. It's very dry, typically in style, and often it's served really, really chilled. So you can enjoy it just on a weeknight. It's a great wine to enjoy during the spring, summer, fall. So it's one that I think has really gained a lot of attention around the world and more folks are familiar with it. There used to be a little more focus, I think, on the lighter style rosés coming from like Provence where they were light pink and really delicate in color. But in the last few years, there's been a bit more of a focus on these darker colored rosés and Rosé d'Anjou is an awesome one to check out if you haven't yet. So those are really the main facts that you need to know about the Loire Valley. There's a lot more that we could get into as far as details around some of the history of the cities in the area and some other wines that are coming out of the region. But I think this is a great overview. If you're not that familiar with the region, this gives you the high level points and everything that you want to know to get started. Again, it's such a diverse region. So I think it can be challenging as a consumer to get started with the Loire. So the best thing to do is to really just throw yourself into the Loire, start trying a lot of different styles of wine, start trying a lot of different producers from the region, and you will find things that you absolutely know and love. There's some incredible quality wines coming from the Loire Valley, and I can't emphasize enough that while it's not as well known of a region compared to Burgundy, Bordeaux, or others within France, it is definitely one that you should check out. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Next week, I'm going to be talking to Charlotte from Chateau de Miniere. She was an incredible resource while I was traveling through the Loire Valley. She let me come to the winery and it's actually a biodynamic farm where they have incredible practices around how they're harvesting grapes. So we're going to talk about that next week as well as more on the Loire Valley. She gives an amazing perspective about what it's like to live and work in this beautiful region. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, definitely do so now so you don't miss my episode next week with Charlotte. And if you loved today's episode, don't forget to like and share it with your friends. The best way to tell others about the Wine CEO podcast is to share my episodes. Have a wonderful week, friends. I hope you drink something new and delicious, and I will catch you all next Wednesday on the Wine CEO podcast.